بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين جل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره I first would like to congratulate you and all <coughs> lovers of the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt for the birth anniversary of Imam <coughs> Ali ibn Musa Radha alayhi salam <laughs> It's a great pleasure to meet you in this night night of Eid Assalamu alaikum after several years although I met some of you in other places but uh, I have not been here for many years and especially to the new center mashallah well done and more especially when this center is dedicated to Imam Raza alayhi salam so it's really added joy alhamdulillah so i'm grateful to allah for this blessing and i pray that inshallah what we are going to talk and listen would be beneficial inshallah for all of us i thought uh, maybe it's very relevant to talk about the name of imam Raza alayhi salam why he is called Rida. Uh, first I read some hadith and then I refer to the salawat of Imam Rida and then my own analysis. You know, Shaykh Saduq Ridwanullah Ta'ala Alay, one of our great muhaddithin, he has one particular book which is all about Imam Raza alayhi salam Uyunu Akhbar al-Raza and there are hadiths either from Imam Raza alayhi salam or about Imam Raza alayhi salam he has one chapter which is called باب العلة التي من أجلها سمي علي بن موسى الرضا. This is actually the very first chapter of the book. What's the reason that Imam was called with this name الرضا? Because you know his, uh, you know name, the personal name is Ali. Yeah. This is a kind of title which is given to him. So, Sheikh Sadu, through his own chain of narrators, he quotes from Ahmad ibn Muhammad ibn Abi Nasr al Bazanti, who's a great muhaddith and companion of uh, Imam Raza, Imam Jawad. He says, I asked. Imam Jawad alayhi salam Qultu l'Abi Ja'far Muhammad ibn Ali ibn Musa So he asked Imam Jawad alayhi salam Inna qawman min mukhalifikum Some of people who don't agree with you yeah? Some of you who are not your followers Yaz'umuna abak they think that your father was called Reza by Ma'moon. When Ma'moon chose Imam Reza as his Wali al Ahd, because you know the story that how Ma'moon wanted to control Imam and at the same time benefit from popularity of Imam etc and Imam didn't want to accept but 
He forced, so he said, that I accept, but the condition is that I don't interfere in anything. I don't appoint anyone. I don't you know, dismiss anyone. I don't do anything. So it was just formality that Imam had to accept. But Imam used this in order to then meet many people, welcome many people. So, Bazanti says, I told Imam Jawad that some people say your father was given this title because he was chosen by Ma'mun as his waliyat, as his prince. فَقَالَ شَذَبُوا وَفَجَرُوا By Allah, this is a lie. Those who said this, this is a lie. To say that Imam Raza was given this title by Ma'mun. بَلِ اللَّهُ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى سَمَّاهُ الرِّزَى This is what Allah has chosen for him. Allah called him Ar-Rida. Why? لَأَنَّهُ كَانَ رِضًا لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ فِي سَمَائِهِ وَرِضًا لِرَسُولِهِ وَالْأَئِمَّةِ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ صلوات الله عليهم في أرضه Because Imam Raza was someone that Allah was pleased with him in Sama, in heaven, in the sky And Rasulullah and all the Imams were on the earth pleased with him Bazanti says He's a you know, knowledgeable person أَلَمْ يَكُنْ كُلُّ وَاحِدًا مِنْ آبَائِكَ الْمَاضِينَ رِضًا لِلَّهِ تَعَالَى وَلِرَسُولِهِ وَالْأَئِمَّةِ He says, I ask Imam, isn't this the case for all your fathers? Imam Qasim also should be the same. Imam Sadiq, Imam Baqir, all of them were pleasing to Allah and pleasing to the Prophet and other Imams. When people make good questions, then they give Imam chance to explain more. Yeah? Good questions are very important. Therefore, in Hose tradition, not only ulama are not, you know, stopping people to ask questions, actually encourage and every great scholar has few people that they are called mustashkil. These are the people that they listen carefully and ask very good questions. And this scholar feels very happy that someone is listening seriously and gives chance to now <laughs> say something. And sometimes maybe the speaker also benefits from good questions. We say, Husnus su'al nisbul ilm. Good question is half of the knowledge. So he had made a good question. Unfortunately, some people make bad questions. They close the discussion. <laughs> but Hosnu Su'a So, he said, I told all your fathers were pleasing to Allah and Rasulullah and other Imams. Now listen carefully. Faqala Bala. Yes, you're right. Fagultu Falimasumia Abu Kamin Bainahim Arriza. Why among all of them, your father is called Reza? Qala لَأَنَّهُ رَضِيَ بِهِ الْمُخَالِفُونَ مِنْ أَعْدَائِهِ كَمَا رَضِيَ بِهِ الْمُوَافِقُونَ مِنْ أَوْلِيَائِهِ Because he has something extra that now I can explain. Not only he is pleasing to Allah and pleasing to Imams and Rasulullah, he is someone that even those who disagreed with him were pleased with him. He was pleasing to Muwafiq and Mukhalif. He had so much of love and so much of, you know, honorable way of dealing with people and knowledge, everything. 
that even someone like Ma'mun had to love him, had to show appreciation. لَأَنَّهُ رَذِيَ بِهِ الْمُخَالِفُونَ مِنْ أَعْدَائِهِ كَمَا رَذِيَ بِهِ الْمُوَافِقُونَ مِنْ أَوْلِيَائِهِ Those who were his awliya and they were in agreement, they were muwafiq, they were happy. Those who didn't like them, also they had to be happy with him. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ مِنْ آبَا Imam Jabal says, this didn't happen to any other Imam. So, Imams are all from the same light. But light, depending on the environment, can be shining differently, can be showing differently. Yeah? So if you have a light in a room which is all green, and a light in a room which is all blue or all orange, yeah, that light functions differently. Imams, depending on the condition, they exhibited their virtues differently. So one Imam is given the title of Sadr, but it's not that others were not Sadr. One is given the title of Qadr, but it's not that the others are not. But this exhibited more. The second hadith that Shaykh al quotes is also very interesting. This is about Imam Musa ibn Ja'far alayhi salam. The narrator is Sulaiman ibn Hafs al-Marwazi but the one who narrates from him is Abdul Azim al Hasani. Hazrat Abdul Azim, who is in Ray, he quotes from Sulaiman ibn Hafs al Marwazi. Marwazi means from the city of Marwa, you know, where Imam Reza went. So, Shaykh al Saduq quotes this as the second hadith, and there are only two hadiths in this chapter. كان موسى بن جعفر بن محمد بن علي بن الحسين بن علي بن أبي طالب الله صل على محمد يسمي ولده عليان الرزا. إمام كاظم whenever was going to call إمام رزا not call I mean refer to him. He was mentioning Ar-Raza. And when he was addressing him, he was saying Abu al-Hasan. Yusammi waladahu aliyan Ar-Raza. Wa kana yaqul. Imam Qazim used to say, Ud'u ilayya waladi Ar-Raza. If he wanted, you know, Imam Raza to come, he was saying, Call my son Reza to come. Call to Levaladi Ar Reza. Or if he wanted to say, I said this to my son, he was saying, I said to my son Ar Reza. Or if he wanted to say, My son told me something, Kala li Waladi Ar Reza. But when he was addressing Imam Reza, قَالَ يَا أَبَا الْحَسَنِ Because, you know, in Arabic it's very respectful if you call someone with his konya, nickname, you know, Abu al-Hasan. So, this title of Ar-Raza is very important. It's not something given by chance. It's given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is the way that Imam Qadim alayhi salam was preferring to refer to him in his absence. Why he is Raza? From Hadith of Imam Jawad be understood because he is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, pleasing to the Prophet, pleasing to Imams, and also because even his enemies had to be pleased with him. But 
we can understand other things as well. So I want to share with you this beautiful uh, salawat that we have from Imam Askari alayhi salam. In Mafati al Janan, you find Salawat bar Khujaj Tahir. The story of this hadith is this Shaykh Tusi, Rizwanullah, you know, has many books. One book is Misbahul Mutahajid. It was a book very popular before Mafati al Janan. There were some books of dua which were very popular among the Shia. One was Misbah al Mutahajjad by Shaykh Tusi, one was Misbah of Kaf Ami, one was Iqbal by Sayyid ibn Tawus. Shaykh Abbas al Ghomi, mashallah, did such a great work that then people just kept using Mafati. But he himself refers to them, he benefited from them. So, Shaykh Tusi in Misbah al Mutahajjad, when he talks about day of Jum'ah, like today, okay? In A'mal of Jum'ah, Friday, he says, some of our Shia, our Ashab, reported from Abu al-Mufaddal Shaybani. And then finally, it reaches Imam Hassan al-Askari, alayhi salam, that he says, I asked, the narrator says, I ask Imam Askari alayhi salam in Surah Man Ra'a in the year 255, the same year that Imam Mahdi was born, to tell me, to teach me, dictate, means to dictate to me so that I write salawat for the Prophet and Imams. So he has a special comprehensive salawat to be dictated so that he can write. And he says, I had a big paper, piece of paper with me. And Imam dictated and I wrote down. But Imam was not reading, Imam was saying. So, first there is salawat for the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then for Amirul Mu'mineen. Then for Lady Fatima. Then for Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein together. Then Imam Zainul Abidin and Imam continues and it's interesting then when he reaches himself after Imam Hadi alayhi salam then the narrator says that when Imam reached the 11th he kept silent. I said you know please continue. Imam said, had it not been that I have to teach you, I would have not said anything because about me. And then Imam said about himself and Imam Mahdi. Now, what he says in this salawat about Imam Reza alayhi salam opens a new horizon for us. Allahumma salla ala Ali ibn Musa. O oh Allah, please send your salutation to Ali ibn Musa. Al-Ladhir Tawaita. The one that you are pleased with. Yeah. One of the titles of Imam Raza is Al-Murtada. Yeah. Ali ibn Musa Raza Al-Murtada. Irtada. In the Quran also we have Laman Irtada means to be pleased with. Then Murtaza means someone that is pleasing. So Allah is pleased with Imam Raza alayhi salam. Okay? Varadhayta bihi man shi'ta min khalqik. This has not received enough attention maybe by the Shia. You are pleased with him of course, it's great, you know, if Allah is pleased with someone, that's great. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'innah irji'i ila rabbika radiyatan marziyya. Marziyya means Allah is pleased. But then, varadhayta bihi man shi'ta min khalqik. 
He is the one with whom you please, whomsoever you choose to please. So not only Imam Raza is pleased with Allah, not only Allah is pleased with him, but there is a third dimension. That if Allah wants to please someone, he uses Imam Raza as a channel to please them. Razayta bihi man shi'ta min khalqik. Millions of people or tens of millions of people every year go for ziyarah of Imam Raza a.s. If they are not pleased, will they go again? Everyone who goes there feels he is welcomed, feels he is, you know, received with love. They want to go again and again. But it's not only that. Inshallah, on the day of judgment, many, many people will be receiving shafa'ah of Imam Raza In dunya, Allah grants our hajat through him. In akhirah, inshallah, he gives us his shafa'ah. So he has been given a special position. Everyone has a speciality. A speciality of Imam Raza is that he's an icon for Raza, pleasure. He is pleased with Allah. Allah is pleased with him. His enemies are also pleased with him, but something new. Any people that you want to please them, you please them with Ali ibn Musa. Allahumma wa kama ja'altahu hujjatan ala khalqik wa qa'iman bi amrik wa nasiran li dinik wa shahidan ala ibadik O oh Allah in the same way that you have made him hujjah over your people his hujjah of Allah this salawat is not just salawat, it's a way also to educate us about the position of Imam, the rights of Imam, what we should know about Imam, because we should send with ma'rifa, with understanding. He is hujja ala khalik. Qa'iman bi amrik. He is the one who stands for your command, for your affairs. He is the one who is guardian for your religion, for your sharia to be implemented. ladinek. He is the helper of your religion. ala ibadik. He is a witness over your servants. Quran has a beautiful discussion about shahid, the concept of witness. What we understand from the Quran is that with every generation of people, there is a witness, there is a shahid. He is a human being, not an angel. Angels are witnessing, but that's a different thing. There is a human being who lives among people in every generation, and he knows what they do, what they believe, what they express or what they hide. And on the day of judgment, Allah brings him to deliver his testimony. From every nation, we will bring a witness. And we will bring you as witness, Allah says to the Prophet, Allah ha'ula, the people who are in your time. Most of our Sunni brothers, they say, Rasulullah is a witness 
for all people from his time up to end of dunya. They say Haula means people at his time and people to come. There is no shaheed after Rasulullah. Most of them say like this. But we say this would not fit into the Quranic account of witness. According to the Quran, after Rasulullah, there must be another witness who lives among people, must live on the earth, not just be alive in the Malakut. Rasulullah is alive. There is no doubt about it, but he is not hujja al al ard when he departs. After Rasulullah, there must be another hujja and another witness. Then after that hujja departs another. Why? Please listen carefully to three ayah. We are not using any uh, hadith, anything, just Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Isa alayhi salam. A'anta qulta lannas attakhizuni wa ummiya ilahain. Did you tell people to take me and my mother as two you know, gods? Of course Allah knows the answer but it's just for others to hear. He says, Subhanaka ma qultu lahum illa ma amartani bih. May you be glorified. I didn't tell people anything apart what you asked me to tell them. I was a messenger. <laughs> Just I delivered your message. Then he says, Inna ma kuntu shaheedan alayhim ma dumtu feeh. I was a witness over them as long as I was with them. فَلَمَّا تَوَفَّيْتَنِي كُنْتَ أَنْتَ الرَّقِيبَ عَلَيْهِمْ When you received me, because Allah says, إِنِّي مُتَوَفِّيكَ وَرَّافِعُكَ إِلَيَّ yeah? Allah says to Isa, I'm going to take you and raise you towards me. When you received me, then I was not shaheed. You were the only one between me and you who was raqib, who was monitoring. I was not shaheed. So although Isa didn't die, but because he was not continuing the position of being hujja of Allah on the earth, he says, I am not shaheed. I was shaheed ma dumtu fihim, as long as I was with them. So in this sense, we need someone after Rasulullah to be living among people and be shaheed. Because Allah says, لَنَنْزَعَنَّ مِنْ كُلَّ أُمَّةٍ شَهِيدًا Every people must have shaheed. Two verses of the Quran confirm this. قُلْ كَفَى بِاللَّهِ الشَّهِيدًا بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكُمْ وَمَنْ عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ Allah says to the Prophet, tell them it's sufficient for me that Allah is a witness between me and you. And the one who has all the knowledge of the book. Who is the, that Shaheed who has all the knowledge of the book? It cannot be Rasulullah because he says Shaheed and Baini wa Bainakum between me and you. We need Two witnesses. One is Allah. One is man indahu ilmul kitab. If you ask any fair Muslim from any mazhab, do you have any candidate that we can say he had ilmul kitab? Any fair scholar says we don't have any candidate after Rasulullah, apart from Amirul Mumini. We are not talking about what happened in Saqifa, you know, was right or not. We are not talking about it. But who had El Mulkita? If you want to understand what is El Mulkita, Quran itself helps. 
قرآن says forget ال... in my words <laughs> forget علم الكتاب علم من الكتاب if you have علم just some knowledge of the book you can do extraordinary things in the story of Prophet Suleiman Prophet Suleiman said who is going to bring the throne of Queen of Saba a jinn first volunteered قال إفريت من الجن أنا آتيك به قبل أن تقوم من مقامك this old jinn said I can bring it before you stand up in few minutes I can bring it jinn you know jinn have some special power in their understanding they are less than human beings normally but in physical power and being able to move and carry things they are very fast so he said I will bring it before you stand up وَقَالَ الَّذِي إِنْدَهُ عِلْمٌ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ أَنَا آتِيكَ بِهِ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَرْتَدَّ إِلَيْكَ تَرْفُكَ The one who had some knowledge of the book. Yeah. Imagine a book has, for example, 2,000 pages. This new one page. One line. إِلْمٌ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ can be just one line. can be one letter. <laughs> okay? The one who had... Some knowledge of the book said, I will bring it before your eyes blink. Means immediately. So, show us, please, without any bias. You know, who was among companions of the Prophet that had Elmun min al kitab? Forget Elmul kitab. Quran says there is someone. You cannot say, you know, such a person didn't exist. Because Quran says, وَمَنْ عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ Another ayah is, أَفَمَنْ كَانَ عَلَى بَيِّنَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَيَتْلُوهُ شَاهِدٌ مِنْهِ Are you going to dispute and not accept someone that has bayana from his Lord? Yeah, Rasulullah had clear signs and proof, miracles from Allah. وَيَتْلُوهُ shahidun men, And he is followed by a witness from himself. Who is that witness that follows Rasulullah? And he is Menho from Rasulullah. That is Amir al Mumin alayhi salam. And Menho is very important to be from the Prophet. There are many, I have mentioned in uh, the book Lessons on Imam and Wilayah, cases that Rasulullah says. That he is from me. I mentioned maybe one case. When the ayah of Bara'a was going to be declared to the Mushrikeen, to the pagans, first, the first caliph took the ayah. And then he had not yet done the job, Rasulullah asked him to come back, send someone to tell him to come back. This is from our Sunni brothers. He came, he went back to Rasulullah and was crying. He said, Hal nazala fi Is any ayah revealed against me? Because, you know, it's very, you know, difficult to be sent for a mission and then be called back. So he said, you know, any ayah, any revelation has come against me. Rasulullah said, no, there is no ayah about you. But Allah has asked me, la yu'addihi illa ana aw rajulun minni. Allah has sent this communication to me. That either I myself should deliver this ayah or someone from me. And then he sent Amirullah. 
So minni doesn't mean to be a Muslim. Yeah? Or to be, for example, related to the Prophet. Whatever. Minni has a special meaning. And from the Quran we understand that minni means someone that 100% follows someone. Son of Nuh, Quran says, and now Laysaman Ahlid. He's not from you. Although he's his son, biologically he's his son, but Allah says, from my perspective, he is not from you. <laughs> yeah? If you look at body, you say this is from him. But if you look at the spirit and akhlaq and light, he, he cannot be taken as son of Nuh. Yeah? This is very important. Therefore, I say, you know, in Ziyara, when you read Ziyara, you must uh, pay this, at, you know, attention to this point. For example, Ziyara of Lady Ma'asuma, salamu alayhi. <laughs> when you say, As-salamu alayka ya binta Rasulillah, this doesn't mean what historians say that, you know, for example, she was a Sayyida and, you know, when we say binta rasulillah means you are someone that can be qualified to be considered as daughter of rasulullah you are binta fatima wa khadija means you resemble fatima and khadija light of fatima and light of khadija can be found in you binta amir al mu'mini binta al hasan wal husain this is not biological, you know, daughter. It's important, but this means that from a spiritual perspective, from Malakuti perspective, you are their daughter. And then, As-salamu alayka ya ukhta waliyyallah. Just think about relation between Sister and brother is different from relation between daughter and father. To be able to be sister for imam is very high position. There is a sense of partnership. Only Zainab can be sister for Imam Hussein. Not every daughter of Amir al Mu'minin necessarily. You know, must be like Zainab. Because Ukht of Imam should support Imam, yeah? And if Imam, for example, is not available, should be able to fill the gap. So Lady Ma'asuma is daughter of Imam, is sister of Imam. Ammata waliyallah. Aunt and Imam, like Lady Zainab and Imam Zainul Abedin. It's more than sisterhood, yeah? To be aunt means you can offer something, not just helping. So, Imam has to be from Rasulullah. Shahid has to be from. Anyway, I talk, our time is very short. So, Shahidan ala ibadik. Imam Raza is witness. You understand the witness concept. وَكَمَا نَسَحَ لَهُمْ فِي السِّرِّ وَالْعَلَانِيَةِ In the same way that Imam Raza, in private, in public, always wanted good for people. Advised them how to grow, how to improve. وَدَعَا إِلَىٰ سَبِيلِكَ بِالْحِكْمَةِ وَالْمَوْعِزَةِ الْحَسَنَةِ He called towards your path with wisdom and beautiful preaching. Quran says, أَدْعُ إِلَىٰ سَبِيلِ رَبِّكَ بِالْحِكْمَةِ وَالْمَوْعِزَةِ الْحَسَنَةِ فَصَلِّ now that he is your hujja, he did this, this, this. Fasalli alayhi. Please send your salutations to him. Afdala ma sallayta ala ahadin min awliya'ik wa khiyaratika min qalq. The best of salutations that you have sent to any of your friends, to any of your chosen people, please send to Imam Raza alayhi salam. Innaka jawadun Karim, you are very generous. So please send this salutation to our Imam. And of course, when you ask Allah to send salutation to Imam, then many things happen. 
in months of Ramadan, I had four lectures on salawat. Please refer. But briefly, when you ask Allah to send salutation to Imam, this is a way you are doing greeting and tahiyyah to Imam. Imam will also say, Oh Allah, please send your salutations to this servant of yours who is remembering me. Can someone send you salam and greetings and you don't reply? Quran says, If someone greets you, either you should do the same or better. Is it possible that someone like me, with all my you know, need and poverty, I offer this beautiful salawat to Imam Raza, and Imam Raza then doesn't you know, reply? If I give him what I have, then he give what he has. <laughs> yeah? I, I try to praise him as much as my little aql tells me. Then he will try to raise me as much as he knows. And also salawat is a dua. Because you are asking Allah to send salutations to him. And when you make this dua, for Imam Raza, Allah will give you more because hadith says whenever you ask for someone something from Allah, Allah will give you the same or more. So, to finish everything, Imam Raza alayhi salam is someone in whom in dunya, but more so in the hereafter, this quality of Raza and pleasure is exhibited not only he is pleased with Allah Allah is also pleased with him Rasulullah is pleased with him all Imams are pleased with him but also his uh, you know enemies were pleased with him and more Allah pleases with him anyone that he wants to please so, whenever you get chance, especially in this center which is called after Imam Raza alayhi salam, send this salutation or similar salutations to Imam Raza alayhi salam and ask for your hajat. Remember Imam al Zaman, get some energy from sending this salutation to Imam Raza and offer this to Imam Zaman alayhi salam. This is very good business. Take from one Imam something and give to another Imam. Yeah. So this is inshallah a way for us to gain inshallah our hajat. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his best of salutations to Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the coming of Imam Mahdi Jalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif and to include us among his helpers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for rahmah and maghfar for all mu'mineen and mu'minat, especially those who have rights upon us, and mu'mineen and mu'minat of this community who have passed away. We ask Allah for shifa for all people who are ill. We ask Allah for shifa for the illnesses that we have in our body and heart. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the last moment of our life the best moment of our life. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Allah, 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 Allah,